Well, howdy folks. Welcome back to my channel. As you can see, I'm wearing my Stylophone shirt today. I've got a smattering of Stylophones sitting over here, and I've got some notes here that I'll reference throughout this video. Now, as you probably learned from the title, I'm gonna talk about Stylophones today, or more specifically, Dubrec, the company that makes the Stylophone. Now, why am I doing this video? It's because I looked for this video and it didn't exist. Now, I ended up making a video about this right here, the Stylophone pocket organ, and if you have not seen that video, I will link it in the video's description and also up over here so you can check it out. Now that goes really deep into that specific product. And so I'm gonna skip over a lot of those things today. Please watch that video if you're more curious than that. Doing research on this was a little scattered because some of these facts are hard to find and some of them, there are a lot of con contradicting facts and I'll note some of those as I come across them. But if you have more sources, um, you know, you can reference that in the comments and I will certainly take a look, but please use sources. Don't say, well, my uncle Joe's best friend told me that because that, that doesn't help me unless, unless you can get me in touch with that person. So anyway, here we go. Here's the complete history of Stylophone or Dubrec in about 10 minutes. So our story begins circa 1967, and again, we have a little bit of conflicting dates at the beginning, but there's a man in the UK named Brian Jarvis. His niece has a toy piano that is broken, so he gets this idea that he could create a little circuit board with an oscillator on it, a speaker, and then he could take on each key, he could put a contact that would touch as you press down that key, and then use a different resistor value on each one of those little contacts and effectively send the pitches to the oscillator and it would turn this toy piano into an organ. Then he realizes, wait a minute, I don't need the whole piano. I could just do this in a little bitty package like this that you could put in your pocket. And thus the Stylophone pocket organ is born. Now the first prototype comes out in 1967. So shortly after that, 1968, the first production Stylophones hit the market. This is actually one of the 1968 models. Now they aren't, that first generation of Stylophones is not on the market very long before they make a minor change to the circuit and the second generation of Stylophone arrives. And that is what you see mostly when you see the vintage Stylophones, most of them are generation twos. Now all of the generation one and twos come in three different colors. There is a black one, a white one, and a tan one, but it's not just colors that actually mean something. The black one is the standard octave, the white one is the treble octave, and the tan one is the bass octave, and it's exactly what it sounds like. They're just pitched differently. In addition, during this time period, Dubrec licenses some stylophones to be made in Hong Kong. They have an aesthetic similar to this. This is not one of the Hong Kong ones, but they have an aesthetic that looks very similar to this. And one of the things that differentiates this generation of stylophone or this model of stylophone is they also came with an AC adapter. Now that brings us up to circa 1975. And again, there's some contradiction on dates. Some people say it was closer to 1974, but somewhere around 1975, Dubrec releases two new products. They release the new sound stylophone, which I have one right here. And in addition to the color change, you also notice that it has a volume knob here. So it's the first stylophone to have a volume knob. In addition, they changed the innards of the stylophone. It uses a completely different oscillator structure than the previous ones did. Also at this point in time, Dubrec releases the Stylophone 350S, and it's sort of a bigger version of the uh, pocket organ, and it has more keys, and it has two styluses, two styli? Two, two, has more than one stylus, and it um, has more keys, and it has more sounds and more effects, so you can do a lot more things with it. Um, the drawback of it is it runs on these two very odd nine volt batteries, that are hard to find. So if you still have one of those, a lot of times it's really hard to find batteries for it. There are mods out there where you can create a rechargeable, or there's even people that have been able to make a cable where you can convert it to run on a regular nine volt, but the battery doesn't last as long. Now there are conflicting accounts about whether Dubrec officially closed up shop in 1975, I've heard 76, I've heard all the way up to 1980 that they actually you know, kept the company alive. But the point is they made no more stylophones after 1975. And so now we fall into a 28 year darkness where Dubrec is nothing but a memory. So now it's 2003 and Brian Jarvis's son, Ben Jarvis, decides to reboot Dubrec. So he brings back the trademark, all of that, and he recreates the company. Now it takes them about four years to get their first product out, but in 2007, the Stylophone S1 arrives. Now for this, they partner with a company called Recreation that makes electronic toys. 
and these are made in China. So these stylophones are not made in the UK any longer. Now it looks very similar to the original uh, pocket organs, but inside it has a digital circuit instead of the original analog circuit. Also, they include a new thing that we haven't seen before on the stylophones, and it's this three-way switch. So there's now a three-way switch. That switch allows them to play in multiple octaves and timbres. So effectively, the colors don't mean the type of stylophone it is anymore. So now we get the age of colors. And so these Gen 4 stylophones are made in several different colors, and they, they all have the same tones within them. Additionally, all of the Gen 4 stylophones have a volume knob that is on the side. So now it's 2010 and Dubrec releases two products in 2010. The Stylophone Mini, which is effectively just a smaller version of the Stylophone. It's effectively a keychain Stylophone or just a smaller Stylophone. It does not have the vibrato circuit, but it works effectively the same way. And then they also released the Stylophone Beatbox. Now this is their first uh, per uh, percussion product ever. So. It basically, it makes beatbox sounds like the name implies. And so it allows you to create sort of drum patterns with like a, you know, digitally generated beatbox effect. So now effectively you can have stylophone drums and stylophone melody at the same time. Now that brings us to 2012. So the recreated Debrec is about nine years old at this point and they release a radically different product, the Stylophone S2. Now this is really cool. It's made in the UK. So this is the first stylophone to be made in the UK since 1975. And it has a stylus, but the stylus is not needed. You can play it with your fingers or the stylus. So the stylus is not connected by a wire any longer. It's just a metal, a piece of metal. So you can use the stylus, you can use your finger, or you can use any other piece of metal that you want to play this particular stylophone. So that brings us up to 2017 and Dubrec brings out this baby right here, the Stylophone Gen X1. Now, as you can probably just see by looking at it, it's effectively an expanded pocket organ, it's got a bunch more controls now where you can affect the filter pitch modulation, it has a delay circuit, some things like that. So you can do a lot more with this stylophone. Additionally, it brings over one feature from the S2 is it has this little pressure ribbon here. So you can play the stylophone with your finger right here or with the stylus down here on the keypad. And that brings us up to 2019 and probably the coolest Dubrec product ever. So in 2019, they release the Stylophone Gen R8. This is a British analog semi-modular synthesizer, and it is amazing. This is the first stylophone to not have a stylus, so you play it with your fingers. It is semi-modular, as I just mentioned, and they only made 500 of them. Um, each one comes with a certificate of authenticity, and when you find these on the used market, they are definitely going for collector prices. Now that brings us up to 2020, and Debrecht decides to go back to the analog circuitry, more like the Generation 2 stylophone. So the Generation 5 stylophone is born. It looks just like the Generation 4, or effectively like all the ones before it, but it is now fully analog. The colors persist in this era, and they actually make several in 2021. They come out with the David Bowie Memorial stylophone. I actually have one here, and of course there's several other colors. They come out with a pink one that is very popular. Just like the previous generation, the colors do not represent the octaves any longer because they all have that pre-position switch. Okay, so October of 2023, and the successor to the stylophone beat box arrives. It's called the stylophone beat. I know, very similar name, but it radically changes completely different circuits it has lots more features, has more sounds in it, um, just a much more fully featured drum machine. And that brings us to this year, 2024. So at NAM 2024, Debrec announces two new products. The first one is called the Stylophone Theremin, and it's exactly what it sounds like, part stylophone, part theremin. You can play it with a little slider, or you can play it by moving your hand within proximity of an antenna. Very cool looking product. There have been several models sent out for reviews to some of the different YouTube channels, but I've not seen any production models on the market as of me filming this video. And they also released the CPM DS2 drone synth. Now this is probably closest to the Gen R8 because it is semi-modular, but it adds a new feature in that it is uh, Eurorack compatible. So it comes in a little powered case, but you can take it out and put it into a Eurorack modular synthesizer if you have one. And so it has full Eurorack capability. Again, some prototypes have been sent out, but I have not seen production hit the market as of the recording of this video. So there you have it. That is every synth that Dubrec has ever produced in approximately 10 minutes. There you go. Did I miss any? Let me know in the comments. Again, if you have anything I can reference, please include that. Anecdotes aren't helpful here. But anyway, I was curious about this video. I did the research, I made it. Hopefully it helps somebody. If you like what I do on this channel, I'd really appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button for me. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. See you guys soon.